Thank you, Marcia. We award the Shapiro Prize every other year to recognize particularly noteworthy collaborations in Jewish philanthropy, something that is so critical right now as we tackle the challenges that are too large and too complicated for any one funder to address on their own. This prize honors Jeffen founding member, uh, Sidney Shapiro, who passed away in 2007 and who was regarded as one of the leading lights of American Jewish philanthropy. Among his many endeavors, he served as the executive director of the Boston-based Levinson Foundation and was a funder for Lilith Magazine and the Coalition for Alternative in Jewish Education. One of the many disappointments of having to cancel last year's conference due to the pandemic was that I couldn't give the Shapiro Award then. We held off, hoping we'd be able to properly honor the recipient with an in-person in event, but this richly deserved award is too important to delay any longer. The winning collaboration is truly remarkable, certainly one of the largest in the Jewish world and one that would hopefully inspire many of us. We'll hear from the winner directly in a brief video now about what collaboration means for them and for all of us. A community is too heavy to carry alone. No one organization will be able to serve all of the needs of everyone in a community. And so when different organizations with different strengths and different focuses join together, collaborate, share ideas, they are better able to serve all of the different needs of the community. The Howard Grinspoon Foundation has always emphasized how can we and do we partner with other people to grow the pie of commitment. That's what I've always been struck by. People are always interested in growing the pie in terms of how can we give people more things? How can we share more with other people? But to grow the pie of commitment, where you are actually asking what are the steps we could take so that more people will get involved, more people will give more, that requires a certain gritty determination and also a certain kind of stubborn optimism. For a community to have the resources that it needs for the long term, it needs to be thinking about the future today. We really worked in a silo as a Jewish Community Foundation prior to the Life and Legacy program. We're all one Jewish community, but we had organizations competing for donors, not wanting to collaborate, not really talking to each other. And the Life and Legacy program invited them all in with, you could say, selfish interests at the onset. Like, hey, we're gonna help you to create these legacies and these opportunities for your donor base and teach you how to steward your donors and how to create more opportunities. And we did it all in the same room with all the organizations. So while they started thinking that they were competing with each other, what they learned was that they could collaborate and create a bigger opportunity for all of the organizations all at one time. If you look back at where we were before the Life and Legacy program and where we are today, we've grown fivefold in assets. And now we have a future that's so optimistic for all of our organizations. And I have seen such collaboration between all the different organizations. There's no competitiveness, really. This is a group effort to keep Jewish life alive here in Orange County. And we, we owe it to the Harold Grinspoon Foundation for that opportunity and plan. And so many people across North America have given of their time and their energies to put in place legacy commitments and they have built a brighter future for tomorrow. It's really inspiring. Because they all work together as a team to bring a legacy gift in. It makes them feel great. Jews coming together to work as a team on behalf of the community. And to me, that's the great part, is that I see all of these philanthropists that really wanted to see success with a smile on their face because now they know that their organizations are secure. So we're so grateful to partner with, right now, 71 communities across North America 
representing more than 700 Jewish organizations. And to date, our partners have secured more than 29,000 legacy commitments with an estimated value of over a billion dollars, of which more than $122 million has already been placed in organizational endowments. None of us can do it alone. And so we look to collaborate to go further and truthfully, because it's more fun. It's just, it feels great to work together as communal partners toward a mission. I am so pleased to present the 2020 Shapiro Prize for Excellence in Philanthropic Collaboration to Life and Legacy, a collaboration between the Harold Greenspoon Foundation and 69 partners across North America. We have with us to receive the prize, our dear friends, Harold Greenspoon, Winnie Sandler Greenspoon, and Arlene Schiff, the national director of the program. So great having you all here and congratulations on this very well-deserved award, which is an inspiration for all of us. And on a topic that is so important now, which is collaboration, especially as we reel from the impact of the pandemic. So. Tell us a little bit about this program. How does this idea of life and legacy come about? Life and legacy is the brainchild of the Jewish Community Foundation of San Diego. And Harold had the pleasure of hearing about the program at a PEACH conference many years ago by two amazing women, Gail Littman of Blessed Memory and Marjorie Kaplan. And, uh, uh, Harold, if you can unmute, can share what that experience was like. I, I met with these two incredible women, and I don't think I understood fully what they were talking about. <laughs> it took me two or three years to figure out that they had a great idea. Everybody was talking about legacy giving, and nobody was doing it. And they came up with a basic formula that made it very successful. San Diego was doing it. They were both from San Diego. And maybe two or three years later, I figured it out. So Life and Legacy is a partnership between Jewish community foundations or federations and their local agencies. And we inspire them to make endowment building a priority and to have conversations with a broad base of donors, many who can't write the check today, but will have the opportunity to leave an after-lifetime gift later. And we work with them in a variety of ways. We provide training, support through individual consulting. We incentivize them financially, and we hold them accountable to goals. What's the secret sauce that keeps the partnership going? We're talking about a partnership that involves a lot of people. So how do, you, how do you do it? I think um, the phrase is used a lot, but in this case, it's very true that a rising tide really does raise all boats. And when organizations come together for a common purpose, in this case, to ensure the financial stability of the fabric of a vibrant Jewish community, then individual organizations don't just survive, they thrive. I think, from my experience as a former Federation exec, I know that Jewish organizations have legacy giving on their to-do list, but most never get to it. Our methodology is simple. We make it a priority. We make endowment giving a priority. What are the achievements of the program that make you the proudest? Well, first of all, the numbers, the number of people involved, the collaboration that happens across the entire Jewish community that participates and the numbers of future dollars now in place for the community of the future are all tremendous and heartwarming uh, benefits of the program. Yeah, but really we're, it's this- we're, we're at a billion dollar, right? Over we, are a billion? A pat, we are over a billion dollars. Wow. But, but really it's the heartwarming stories that come out of it. The personal stories about people who feel so grateful for a way to be able to give back in a meaningful way. And, uh, and, this, and the conversations that they're having with their families, their children, 
and uh, people appreciate the opportunity to give a legacy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, f- facts and figures are great, but uh, personal stories is what touch, if it's touched the heart. So what is next for life and legacy? Before you go into that, I wonder, Arlene, if you could tell the story that you told me about the, the house. <laughs> I just remember that house thing, okay? Sure. So this is one of my favorite stories, and it comes from one of the first communities I worked with, which is Charlotte, North Carolina. And there was this lovely woman. She was an older woman. She was a regular attendee of her synagogue. And the rabbi approached her about leaving a legacy. And after a lovely conversation, she said, Rabbi, I would love to leave a legacy, but I don't have many resources. All I have is this condo and I'm leaving it to my four children. The rabbi knowing that he was being a little bold said, I know how much the shul means to you. Would you consider making us your fifth child? The woman smiled and said she would think about it. She discussed it with her children who were thankfully all doing very well and none of them live in Charlotte and I believe they're just gonna sell the condo. And they encouraged her to make the gift. They said, what's the difference mom if we receive a fourth or a fifth of the condo. The woman called the rabbi a few days later and said, Rabbi, you gave me the greatest gift. I never thought I could do anything significant for the congregation. Thank you for asking. The future of life and legacy. What can we expect? Well, we'll have to raise the next billion in half the time. (laughs) I think we're very proud that legacy giving is becoming normative behavior in the Jewish community, but there's still work to be done to get to the point where every Jewish community and every Jewish organization is committed to endowment building and legacy giving, and where every donor who makes an annual gift commits to leaving a legacy. Harold, any final comments for us? Yes, I would love to say thank you very much. Thank you so much for recognizing this project and this program. It's so meaningful to the Jewish world. And I so much appreciate what you're doing to help us move this forward. I'm deeply grateful for Arlene Schiff, for what she's done. And maybe Arlene should talk about all the letters we received from all these legacy foundations or groups and how they deeply appreciate for what you've accomplished. So I want to thank you so much. Maybe Winnie, you want to come in and jump in? Just to say again, thank you. We are really honored to receive this award and it means a lot to be celebrating collaboration. And so we look forward to continuing to build life and legacy into the future. Amen to that. So thank you very much and mazel tov.